ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Leader Weekends. Every Saturday, we're bringing you a bonus episode taken from our business podcast, How to Be a CEO. This is a cut down version, so you will need to hit the link in the show notes to hear the full thing. Brand new episodes of How to Be a CEO are released every Monday morning. Now, let's begin. Every successful entrepreneur will give you the same advice when it comes to setting up a business. Find a problem that needs solving. Well, that's exactly what entrepreneur and now CEO Richard Maybe did. I've never yet met a person who's told me that they didn't find working with contracts painful. Back in 2016, he co-founded Duro, an online platform designed to make creating, altering and signing contracts a lot quicker. But Richard followed an unusual path to get there, leaving his job as a lawyer to pursue his mission to improve the way we deal with contracts. Lawyers tend to be a very detail-minded, risk-averse. They're not naturally sort of lending themselves to being entrepreneurs. This is a story all about identifying a problem and learning how to create and sell the solution. We'll first build by the hour. So if you build by the hour and someone says, do you want to save time? You go, kind of yes, kind of no. Last year, Duro processed 500,000 contracts, but Richard's hoping it will eventually become the default platform for contracts across the world. Well, the funny thing about contracts is really everyone uses them. So we sometimes think contracts are for lawyers and I come from a legal background, but actually, you know, we all interact with contracts, whether that's signing our employment contract when we get a new job, maybe a consulting agreement if you're a freelancer, if you're leasing a, a house, for example, or a flat. We interact with these documents, but generally the process of agreeing those documents is a very manual, archaic process. It tends to involve assembling Microsoft Word documents, saving them as PDFs. We now have e-signature, which can help a little bit, but most of that process is pretty manual. And to most people who aren't you know, deeply involved in the law, it's a very confusing process as well. So when, when we started Juro, really what we wanted to do is build a very streamlined tool and service that would allow people to create, execute and manage legal contracts very easily in the browser, online and in one place. What do you think it is about Duro that sort of excited investors? So it's always a hard thing to answer. I think you know sometimes you have to ask the investors themselves. But I think the journey we went on, we tend to look at really sort of three things. So team traction and technology, right? So team, do we have the right group of people that could execute on this opportunity? And I think Duro were lucky in that I came from a legal background. We had that kind of legal DNA in the team, which was certainly helpful. And we sell our software to in-house legal teams. So understanding the customer, very important. Powell came from a computer science background, the technology background. So we built in great designers and great commercial folks, a great people and talent team. And I think that was exciting to the investors, which is, you know, it's hard to build a, a specialized cross-functional team. On the technology, I think our vision has always been that we should become the default way to agree terms online, which is a big vision. And that's something that, you know, I think appealed to our venture capital investors like Point Nine Capital and Seed Camp uh, and Union Square Ventures and Eight Rows. And then um, traction. So I think, you know, we found that there was a real pressing need for what we're building. And that meant that our early customers, many of whom are still customers, you know, five years later, were pulling the product. And even though the product wasn't fully built, they were using it and were paying for it. So we were able to point to traction and, and fast growth as well. And I think, you know, fundraising is every entrepreneur I speak to says what a nightmare it is. And certainly for us, we faced tons of rejection along the way. I think you just have to kind of keep on in that core belief that there is a big problem to solve here. You can solve it and you just need to find the right partners to do that with. Some of the companies that have been your customers, companies like Deliveroo, Kazoo and Curve, all quite young, quite new businesses. Do you think some of the more sort of long-standing older companies need more convincing before becoming one of your customers? It's a really good question. So you're absolutely right that the sort of early customers of Juro were all these kind of venture-backed technology businesses. And the thing they all had in common was they're processing loads and loads of contracts. So you mentioned Deliveroo and Kazoo. These are very, very fast-growing companies, thousands of contracts processed per year. And Juro is the, you know, the platform through which they can, can do that. I think the other aspect of that is obviously very forward-looking legal teams in those companies. So people really willing to do things in a new way. 
And if you think as a lawyer, you might spend three hours a day in email and, and Microsoft Word, you're suddenly transitioning completely to Jira. It's, it's quite a radical shift. So we definitely found our community there. We now have a community of 700 in-house lawyers. Uh, it's the largest community of its type in, in Europe. And a lot of them are that profile of kind of early adopter. I think as, as we've grown and our revenue has grown over time, we've been able to find more and more customers who are more perhaps traditional backgrounds. Uh, so these might be corporates who are maybe a little bit larger, better established. Still, you find those champions who are sitting at their desk, incredibly frustrated by the manual process they're going through and willing to work with a challenger vendor. Let's take a break now. In part two, Richard talks security online and artificial intelligence. Some of the things that really excite us is how you can use AI and machine learning to start to help lawyers do some of the more complex jobs. In terms of the tech, I'm personally quite interested in, in tech and things like AI and machine learning and that kind of thing. Is this a lot more simple than those kinds of things or does it use elements of, of either at all? We've looked at elements of, of AI, so machine learning, natural language processing quite a bit in contracts. I think you know m most of our focus over the last year has been actually in building out the core platform. So ensuring that we have a great editor for contracts, ensuring that we integrate with other tools really easily, ensuring the user experience is um, particularly refined and easy. So getting a lot of those basics right. I think looking ahead, some of the things that really excite us is how you can use AI and machine learning to start to help lawyers do some of the more complex jobs. There's the basic jobs, which are you've got to populate a template and you've got to you know, exchange a, a document, you've got to compare versions, you've got to sign it. You can do all that. Over time, the exciting thing is you can start to predict actually what people should negotiate based on past behavior. What we don't think we can replace is that human judgment Right. So the, the, the thing that you, you just know when you have a good lawyer and you know when you have a bad lawyer with is what does all that experience and, and logic and thinking do? And we're just a really long way away from that, I think, in the AI. But there's some really simple things that we can absolutely help with. One of the other things that sort of came to mind when I was thinking about this tech was the security around these contracts. Obviously, when you're sending things online, for some person to sign. I mean, are there vulnerabilities that could mean bad actors exploiting this technology? We spend a lot of time on information security and we have whole teams that work on these things because no software is ever 100% safe, right? And that includes, by the way, exchanging Microsoft Word files on email. And we do that with features like, you know, we have a contract locking feature. So if you share a contract with the URL and you no longer want it to be visible, you can just lock it. We have time limited URLs, right? So if you share a link, you can say, well, this is going to be available for two days. You can't do that with Google Docs. You can't do that with sharing a, a file over an email. So on the one hand, of course, we have this huge migration to the cloud. And, uh, you know, I think the cloud is forecast to grow to 500 billion or so this year. So there's massive growth happening here and it's being adopted everywhere. And I think as long as the, the access controls are secure, the protocols followed are right, actually software can give you a more secure way of operating than what you had previously. Uh, but of course, it comes with risks and it's something you know we, we invest in a lot in and take extremely seriously. Richard, my final question for you, what would you say to young people, young entrepreneurs hoping to, to reach the position of CEO of a company one day? I think that the, the, the number one thing I've learned really is all companies are people games, right? So no matter what you're doing, what you're selling, what the services are, I think one thing that has paid huge dividends for us as a company is just the common decency and the empathy of understanding fellow human beings. And that's not something you need a degree for, right? That's not something that you need to be very you know, academically clever at. You don't need to be highly experienced at. You need to be a good person. And I think if you start by being a good person, it can have a huge effect. And I think... The thing that can give young entrepreneurs a lot of confidence, you know, especially if you're not coming from this sort of you know, amazing CV background and whatever else, is you only really have three tasks. You've got to make sure you find a problem that's worth solving. You've got to be able to solve that problem. And then you've got to be able to build together a group of people who are going to execute on that in the long term. Now, none of those things require a degree, right? And, and I think the thing that 
you need to ask yourself as an entrepreneur is actually, do you love building groups of people? Do you love developing people? Do you love working with people? And are you the right kind of person for that? And if you are, you know, you've gone at least 50% of the way. The rewarding thing is, in whatever you're doing, is if you build a company where people are excited to come to work every day, actually you've improved at least, you know, in the case of Jura, 100 people's lives. If you build a great product as well, you're going to improve the world a little bit more. So always thinking from the very early days about people first is of paramount importance. That was Richard Maybe, CEO of Juro. For all the latest business news, interviews and features, head to standard.co.uk forward slash business or pick up the Evening Standard newspaper. How to be a CEO is back first thing Monday morning. Thank you.